full heart break you know this is like a emotion from our heart but you know the valentine's day we see the shapes of the hearts of all sizes all around the hearts of chocolates and red roses poetry candies above all it talks about love but we want to find out where did valentine's day came from like how it started so there are many tradition about its origin but the most authentic seem to be the one from encyclopedia britannic that says that this day nothing to do with the saint valentine instead it is related to the roman pagan festival like you know they talk about god lupercalia so this was celebrated on 15th feb in the honor of the goddess juno the names of the girls were placed in an urn and the men would draw uh, out the name of a girl at random you know how they draw it that's how who would then become their date for the remaining festival that's how it started when christianity came to rome they tried to christianize this uh, obscene yet popular festival by replacing the names of the girls by those of saints the men were then uh, supposed to emulate the saint who named their trio for the rest of the year however this attempt proved unsuccessful and the use of girls name written so many associated with cupid the virtually you know without clothes that uh, naked god of love the central character of valentine's day which shoots the people with its arrow to make them fall in love his mother said to venus goddess of love and apparently the rose was her favorite flower so another tradition speaks of saint valentine's who was killed on 14th feb emperor claudius for secretly arranging the marriage of his soldier whom he had banned from the marriage so the bishop said to have fallen in love with the jailer's daughter during his imprisonment and wrote her a letter signed yours valentine you understand that's how it was started and which became a tradition for the people to come in 496 pope jelisius officially replaced the pagan festival of 15th feb with saint valentine's day on 14th feb so but today you know valentine's day today whatever the origin of this day today it seems to have returned to its pagan like you know all the vulgar things people are celebrating and they make it they they are like uh, printing in the papers like uh, some of the people they share their personal experience they said if somebody didn't wish on the valentines they had their divorced and such kind of stories are spreading all over so what kind of love depends upon gifts for its survival what kind of love is restricted to one day in the whole year what kind of love breeds hatred jealousy and sense of deprivation in many you understand if somebody is given the gift they feel good about it if somebody is not giving they think oh like they don't care me they don't love me you understand that's the thing and they are publicizing this and everybody feels good if somebody has been given the uh, like you know some uh, sort of gift but what islam says we are all muslim we love each other so muslims have a day of eid we have two eid festivals like uh, like after ramadan time so that is uh, one eid and eid ul adha and uh, d- during the ramadan time one, one more eid so those are the two eids and also on fridays there's a special day for all of us but you know this kind of uh, unnecessary things which promotes like uh, having this dating or having out of wedlock relationship there is no such thing in islam this is out of islam so here few things will see what islam says ask yourself how much do i love prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so like prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to whom we should love first first we should love allah then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam not even our father our children that is the love we should do 
so how can we get love to allah we have to follow the book of allah we have to learn like you know if you are loving somebody you want to know about it so if you love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you want to know about allah isn't it you want to know the book uh, of what allah's book says so there is no concept of boy and girl friendship qualities of women described in quran are chaste women not lustful nor ones taking secret friends so muslim have a beautiful institution of marriage where romance is not a summer fling or is it based on superficial looks but on a serene relationship of mutual affection kindness and responsibility so true love comes in the marriage because when you do the marriage it fulfills once like uh, islam because you know we all want good relationship we want good friendship that can only be found after having your marriage with a good wife good spouse so there is no such thing like a true love if somebody is giving gift then you are feeling happy we will not do that we only appreciate the relationship which husband and wife could have okay that's the thing so i just want to share this thing if you have question in the end i'll take the questions inshallah so uh, as you know we are doing smaller surah we want to learn the short surahs their meaning and detail about it i just want to focus more on the summary so suratul adiyat adiyat means those that run adiyat mean those that run so wal adiyati dabhan by the horses who run with the panting so here when he talks about this you know as, as i mentioned previous class also surahs are either makki or madni so there are two kinds of surah so this surah is makki surah means it was revealed when before the migration when they were they were in the makkah so this was before the migration so when before the migration this surah is called makki and it has 11 verses this surah adiyat has 11 verses and what is the meaning of adiyat those that run and it talks about horses in the makki surah but this is a makki surah giving the example of the horses allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that man does not show even that much of loyalty and gratitude as a loyalty obedience and compliance which the horses to their master have you ever seen how the horses are committed to their master especially when they run they are so committed they are so humble in other words man is one man in person like you know talking about any person man is worse than even a beast means like a animal man also knows that a horse which does not obey has no value like you know they train the horses if some horse is not obeying like they think that that horse is not loyal it means no use no value for him but the same person does not realize that if he does not give gratitude to allah subhanahu wa taala and does not worship allah he will have no value before allah as a horse is loyal to his master man also should be loyal to and faithful to allah subhanahu wa taala we all have to go back to allah the only there is success and salvation of person a man or a woman any body is with allah subhanahu wa taala so what is the first ayah says wal adiyatu dabha when you stop it you say dabha uh, when you continue dabhan fal muriyati qadhan so it is rhythmic and we already memorizing it when we are doing doing quran uh, class one to one so alhamdulillah most of the uh, students are memorizing this so by the horse who run with panting breath like you know when horse is running very fast they will have the heavy breathing isn't it wal muriyati qadha then strike sparks with their hooves when they run so fast you might have seen their hooves have a shoes like you know made made of metal so it will strike sparks and wal mughirati subha then charge suddenly in the morning like you know how the horses uh, run in the morning such a beautiful scene fa asarna bihi naqa 
then raise up there by clouds of dust when they run have you ever seen how the dust will be there clouds of dust that's what it talk about for wasatna bihi jam'a means then penetrate there by into midst of enemy collectively you know this horses is like you know they are facing enemy then also they are still together and they want to face the enemy they are not scared of the enemy you understand that's how it's going to be here particularly talking about those horses they are running and they obey the master and they go in front of the enemy and they are not scared of them but now talking about the mankind how the mankind is innal insana li rabbihi lakanud indeed mankind is ungrateful to his lord mankind in general it's talking about everyone every person is ungrateful to his lord means ungrateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why is it so wa innahu ala zalika la shaheed and indeed he himself is a witness to that how we are witness to ourselves like you know many times it happens allah has given so much like good house good opportunity uh, good food but still we keep on cribbing the things oh i don't have this and that you know that's how we become ungrateful so it means we are witnessing ourselves is there anyone who is saying that no we ourselves are saying that many times we see uh, ourselves pitying ourselves oh i don't have this i don't have that we never see like uh, water is fill uh, half of the glass is fill with the water we always see half glass is empty you, you see in a negative manner we talk in a negative manner so we are witnessing ourselves in that manner so we are being ungrateful wa innahu li hubbil khaira la shadid so hub means love and indeed for the love of worldly wealth he is intense so again here talking about general we all love the worldly things we are so much engrossed into the worldly things we are so intense la shadid means very strongly very intensely like how come like if we have one thing we want to have another if we have another we want more 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 we are never satisfied with one thing we want we always want worldly thing more and more doesn't matter how much we have still we have that in our heart more love for the worldly wealth it could be anything it can be home it can be gadgets it can be roaming around here and there it can be food different kind of food or um, you want to have a good holiday it can be anything person to person vary because some people they love different kind of food some people they want to uh, uh, see different places some people they have different kind of thinking you know but it is related with the worldly wealth is it wrong like loving the worldly things there's nothing wrong up to a certain extent we all want good things isn't it but having more is wrong you have to remember that having more is wrong afala yalamu iza dusira ma fil qubur does he know when that which is in the graves shall be brought out what does it mean like you know there are things in the grave we all know like grave has the bodies dead bodies right it will be brought out when on the day of judgment that's the thing talking about when the bodies will be taken out means when everybody will come out alive how come they are coming alive so try to understand one day we all will die okay the trumpet first trumpet will be blown when all will die okay the second trumpet will be blown when the people will rise from the grave and they will be collected on the day of judgment so here talking about afala ya'lamu iza dusira ma fil qubur does he not know when that which is in the grave shall be brought out wa husila ma fi sudur and that which is in the chest it shall be made manifest what is in the chest in the sudur our heart so instead of saying heart fuad or qulub allah is saying sudur 
whatever in your chest whatever you're thinking whatever you have in your mind and uh, heart allah will make it manifest how come because allah knows everything what is hidden your heart inna rabbahum bihim yawma izin laqabil indeed their lord on that day shall be well informed of them means allah is aware of whatever the things you are doing these days it's easy to imagine it right you are recording somebody on the video and you know oh it is recorded on the video the allah is taking our recording right and left there are two angels they are recording everything so everything is recorded on the day of uh, judgment everything will be manifested it will be widely open so you can't escape in that so this suratul adiyat those that run so when i ask you what it talks about it talks about how horses those who are very humble they are very committed but uh, uh, when they go in the like uh, in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how submissive they are they listen to the master but what about a person what about a insan what about a human being human being is ungrateful inna al insana li rabbihi la kanud we are ungrateful because we are ne- never satisfied with one thing we want the more and more love of this world li hubb la qayra shadid shadid is intense loving this world is nothing wrong but loving more and more and more is wrong you can have one thing you are not satisfied till you know you you want more and more that is not likable and also here we learn one day allah will make the things manifest so when a person thinks that after death he will not have to go near allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will not have to give a account of deeds his life will take a wrong direction the house the family society will get filled with the thieves sinners evil doers and human society will be deprived of peace and tranquility to illustrate the example like you know how the things here mention the uh, like uh, example of uh, here mention about the horse has been compared and how he is going even though he, the horse has to go in the way of allah for uh, war still is submissive but what about a person what about a human being a human being is submissive or not we have to check ourselves the another thing today's class we going to learn prayer because we were doing the five pillars you remember what are the five pillars i told you one of the pillar is uh, salah first pillar is la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah it's just a review of, about the previous class what are the five pillars five pillars first pillar is la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah there is no god but allah and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger of allah and the second pillar is salah salah means prayer and hajj once in lifetime and doing the Uh, like uh, fasting fasting mandatory fasting talking about ramadan fasting and also giving the zakat charity during the month of the ramadan taking out 2.5 from your wealth from your jewelry so here we going to learn the second pillar of islam that is salah its obligation eminence and importance salah or prayer is the plural of salawat exalted status in islam that is uh, like the act of worship try to take the notes inshallah when i take the test or uh, you have to write it down inshallah salah is the pillar of islam on which the religion is firmly established like you know as i mentioned there are five pillars of islam if this pillar is not strong the building will collapse and messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the head of the matter religion is islam its pillar is the prayer and the highest peak is going in the way of allah but salah does it like you know just physically no it's mental it's spiritual submitting to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starting with allah hu akbar so in this we will learn why we are praying what is the purpose of praying why why we are doing the prayer 
because our parents are forcing us to do or because when we go to masjid that uh, imam sahab is saying oh you have to pray because that's the reason no there is a reason behind it allah says in the quran and i have created not the jinn and the men except that they should worship me alone this is imperative this is an order from allah subhanahu wa taala like you have to pray bama qalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liyabudun our purpose is for prayer our creation is for the prayer our creation is not just for the worldly uh, education of course we have to do the worldly education but what about the prayer prayer is for our spiritual thing you know can you buy your peace of mind in any store online or in person can you go and buy it you can't why people become muslim because they want peace they find peace and tranquility being muslim so here when you pray starting it's like a you know you have to develop a habit it's not a easy thing believe me it overnight you can't develop you have to do it do it do it do it finally you get used to it and you get that peace of mind with the salah so why you are uh, doing because allah has given that purpose next time you should remember that the very purpose for which he has created us is to worship him throughout our lives throughout our lives and when it what age it starts at the age of 7 by the 10 you are training completed salah is an obligation to be fulfilled throughout one's life and must be established even in the times of fear what do you mean by times of fear sometimes you are on the airport sometimes you are in the mall Th- that time also it's a fear like you know people uh, saying the things still you have to pray you can take the corner for example in the school also you have to take the permission you you should ask them can i do that you have to take the permission if they give you get, they give you the some corner or some room there you can go and do it especially talking about fridays if you get the permission that's really good because you don't have any problem then we have to guard our five prayer because this is like you know when we are praying we are giving the gratitude and we have to pray whether we are on the foot whether we are riding we have to do like you know you are traveling you are going in the flight still you have to pray you are not on the driver seat somebody else is driving can you pray yes still stop somewhere towards the Uh, like the, your direction should be qibla what is qibla qibla means direction of the prayer what it is called direction north east direction we have so here this is the thing you know order your children to be punctual in salah when they attain the age of 7 years note this down 7 years when they attain the age of 10 hid them for abandoning salah and provided them with separate beds so what do you mean by hit them hit them means tell them in a manner strictly not hitting them means smacking them not that way some parents they do that but what's the end result uh, like children they become more stubborn instead if they say lovingly they would listen to them inshallah because love makes the person more humble if we reprimand or if we smack the children it will make them more stubborn and they will have hatred towards the religion so we can start uh, training them from 7 by 10 inshallah they will be trained but what if they are not they cross the age they must be 20 25 doesn't matter you can still learn it sometimes you won't believe some sisters they are 60 70 still they don't know how to pray there's nothing wrong don't be shy you still can learn it and one more thing what we learn separate beds even you know two brothers in the same room still separate beds keep the pillow in between two sisters sharing the same room no problem keep the pillow in the between if you have separate beds separate room that is well and good so 
this is the thing which is commanded this is the command which was given and this is the saying of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is called sunna it is called hadith so what is the difference between a muslim and a non muslim that is salah so if you pray you are a muslim if you don't if you abandon then you are non muslim you are abandoning it what if you are still learning it yeah take some time learn it inshallah step by step we going to learn it first today in today's class we learn why prayer is important why prayer is important